Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the Introduction to Economics course, Unit 8. The title of our unit is the Factors of Production and Factor Markets. Um, after completing this chapter, uh, you'll be able to identify the three factors of production, explain how labor market equilibrium takes place, analyze the causes and effects of shifts in labor demand and supply, Define capital, explain how to determine the net present value of an investment project, and explain how the net present value calculation aids the decision maker in determining whether or not to pursue an investment project. Next one, uh, you will be able to learn the, how to explain the demand curve for capital and the factors that can cause it to shift. And you will be able to explain and illustrate the loanable funds market and explain how changes in the demand for capital affect that market and vice versa. And then you will be able to explain what determines economic rent and rent differentiates and explain how rent functions as a cost to the individual firm. Um, we will start our chapter uh, by first defining what the factors of production is. And according to classical economists, there are three groups of factors of production. These are labor, capital, and land. Let's look at the labor first. It includes human resources and firms pay wage to the labor. I mean, these are the workers. Next one is capital. It stands for machinery, equipment, buildings and other tools that are used for the production of goods and services. And the last one is land. Um, it includes not only the physical area that the production occurs, but also other natural resor resources such as water, natural gas, etc. Um, the market for labor is where the firms hire employees to perform different tasks in their organizations. We assume that this market is a competitive one. In modern economies, most firms need employees with different skill sets to operate efficiently. For example, the skills you need to be a good factory worker uh, are not the same as the ones needed to be a good accountant or a good manager. Um, before we talk about the demand for labor, let's look at the definition of some key terms about the topic. The first one is marginal product of labor. Uh, its short form is MP, which is the increase in total output produced from additional units of labor is employed. And the second uh, term is marginal revenue of the product labor. Its short form is MRP. And it shows us the value of the production made by the last worker hired by the company. Um, when we look at this sample table, and it's it's taken from a pizza restaurant in the short run, um, this uh, this this table can be uh, assessed in terms of marginal product of labor and marginal revenue product of labor. We can see that the one has uh, already invested 100 units uh, into other factors of production. As you see here, the owner is, I'm sorry, here the owner and uh, here the owner, he invested 100 units of product and uh, other, into other factors of production. And there is no production without any worker. As you can see in the chart, hire, hiring from the sixth worker, here, here is the sixth worker, you can see there is no positive effect in the uh, total product. And also worker seven actually causes a decrease in production. As you see, here is the decrease in production. From that point of view, Every firm eventually faces a point in production after which employing extra units of labor yields smaller and smaller increases. 
This fact is called the law of diminishing marginal product of labor. Um, so far, we have seen the mechanics of a single firm's labor demand. At a given wage level, each firm has a certain level of demand for labor. And when we need to explain the market dem demand for labor, we can see that adding up the labor demand by in all individual firms, we find the market demand for labor for each wage level. As you see, the market demand for labor is the um, is is the collection of single firms labor demand and then we create the market demand for labor and of course there are some factors affecting the labor demand and these factors are market price technology um, prices of other factors of production and number of firms in the market of course and all of these factors affect the demand of labor in the marketplace um, each worker faces a trade-off between work and leisure of course if he or she decides not to work at all she forgoes the benefits of working and for example wages uh, in other words, she will have a lot of time to spend as she wishes, but not much money. On the other hand, if she decides to uh, spend her day working, she will not have any time to left to spend in leisure activities. She will have more money to spend, but not as much time uh, to spend the money. In that sense, wage is the opportunity uh, cost of leisure of a worker. Um, as you see, uh, when we especially think about the given figure about the supply of labor, um, there is an obvious positive relationship between wages and willingness to work, as you see. We can easily conclude that an individual worker's labor supply curve is upward sloping, since the labor labor's market supply curve is the uh, sum of all individual labor supply. Uh, curves, it's also upward sloping. Um, a market supply curve for labor shows the total amount of labor that workers are ready to supply at a given wage. This amount is affected by some other factors uh, which are assumed to be constant when the supply curve is drawn. Changes in population I mean, uh, population may change in peacetime or wartime, or immigration can affect the population, or famine. Or uh, if there are some changes in the tastes of workers, I mean, uh, in the past, people do not uh, consider being a football player as a job. But now, being a football player is considered as a job. And the last one is opportunities in other labor markets. And when we need to talk about equilibrium in the labor market, as you see, the given figure here shows the equilibrium in the labor market. If the wage is, as you see here, it's wage one, there is excess supply in the labor market. This means some workers who want to work at this wage level will be una unable to find uh, a job and it's, it may cause unemployment. As a result, the wage will be driven down. On the other hand, if wages are as low as wage two, as you see, uh, workers do not want to work that much, but firms demand more workers. So there will be excess demand and the wage will increase. And as you see, this wage is the equilibrium market or market clearing wage where labor demand is equal to labor supply. Um, we can think of capital as the machinery and when we need to define the capital as a term we can say that it's the equipment machines and structures used by firms to produce goods and um, these tools in the past uh, uh, can be uh, can be achieved by not consuming some portion of an economy's commodities then Rather, these products, these past products were invested to be used production in the future.
Giving up present com consumption for the future, one is the main theme of all capital accumulation. Some common examples of capital include hammers, or forklifts, conveyor belts, computers, or trucks. Capital differs based on the worker and the type of work being done. For example, a dentist may use a sickle probe, a dental mirror, or an examination room to provide medical services. He or she doesn't have to use hammers for his job. And your teacher may use textbooks, desks, and a whiteboard to produce educational services. So we can say that capital uh, changes according to the tasks which should be done. And when we think, as we mentioned the capital market in this chapter, it's inevitable to mention the demand for capital, capital and net present value, and the demand curve for capital. Uh, when we need to talk about demand for capital, we can say that since a firm demands physical capital to produce goods and services, its demand for capital arises. Capital and net present value these are two different terms. Capital value is the real value of the tools or services. Net present value is the value of these after assessing their costs, including the capital value. And present value depends on the interest rate. And the last one is the demand curve for capital. The demand curve for capital represents the inverse relationship between interest rate and the quantity demanded. It's drawn as negatively sloped and represents the lower the interest rate, the higher quantity of capital is demanded. Now it's time to talk about some factors affecting the demand for capital. Um, the first factor is expectations of people or companies. Next one is technological changes. The other one is population and income increase. Next one is relative factor prices. And the last factor is tax policies applied by the government. Um, the desire for more capital means, in turn, a desire for more loanable funds. Similarly, at higher interest rates, uh, less capital will be demanded because uh, more of the capital in question will have negative net present values. Higher interest rates, therefore, mean less funding demanded. The supply of loanable funds is an upward sloping curve, as you see. And um, a large quantity of funds will be made available at high interest rates rather than at low interest rates and most individuals pre prefer present consumption and must be paid to defer consumption by saving. And um, we need to talk about, of course, the relationship between capital market and loanable funds. And uh, they have a simultaneous relationship uh, between each other. If, for example, the demand for loanable funds increases, the equilibrium interest rate will also increase. Therefore, fewer investment projects will be profitable and then causing a reduction in demand for capital goods. Similarly, if the demand for capital goods increase, uh, the demand for loanable funds will also increase. Assuming that the supply of loanable funds stays the same, the market clearing interest rate will go up. In turn, the quantity demanded for capital will be lowered by a higher interest rate. And as the last uh, factor of production, the, we will talk about land market here. It's one of the factors of production, as we mentioned. And besides all, besides land, any natural resource used in the production of goods and services is also considered land. When we want to understand the land market, uh, we need to clarify these terms at first. The first one is the rent, um, the income that resource owners earn in return for land resources. And the second one is economic rent. It's the price uh, paid for the use of land and other natural resources which are completely fixed in total supply. 
in the given figure of supply, as you see, um, the supply of arable land in the economy as a whole, which is shown by the supply curve as here, it's S, and the demand curve, it's D, uh, and the uh, demand curve represents the demand of producers for the use of that land. The downward sloping demand curve indicates that the lower the rent, other things remaining the same, the greater the quantity of land demanded. And uh, what separates land market from other production markets is its unique feature related to quantity supplied. First, the quantity is fixed, thus the household choices cannot be changed. It cannot change the quantity supplied. Uh, when we need to talk about uh, farm markets, we need to talk about its perfectly inelastic supply because the aggregate quantity of the land supplied of particular type and in a particular location, they stay constant. Another unique feature is that the production cost of land is zero. It's a free and non-reproducible gift of nature. The next thing that we need to keep in mind about farm market is the changes in demand because the quantity of land supplied is fixed. The rent is determined by demand. One should ask now what determines the uh, demand for land. Actually, we have already discussed the factors uh, such as the price of the good produced on the land, the productivity of the land, which depends in part on the quantity and quality of the resources with which land is combined, and the prices of the other resources that are combined with land. I mean, here we can mention where the land is uh, as a uh, factor that affects the change in demand. And the last one that we need to mention about land market is the alternative uses of land. A piece of land, of course, is not just demanded for production of agricultural products. First of all, people also demand it to build houses on. A government might also plan to build a highway. Finally, businesses may want to build a factory site or a warehouse. And this is the end for the Unit 7 in Introduction to Economics Course 1, and thank you for listening.